Uh, welcome to the January 7th meeting of the Radnor Township Board of Commissioners. Would everyone please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first of Ms. Ms. Borowski, may I make a request? Yes. We get our lights on over here. Oh. Lights? Does that, can somebody take care of the lights? Um, I believe it looks as though that in the short time we've, we've had some of these burned out. So, But there's a significant bank that's, that's off right now. So we'll see what we can do for the next meeting to have that corrected. <laughs> part of the cutbacks, yeah. There are a number of these. Now, there are some that are by the screens that do not get illuminated because of the... Okay. <laughs> All right, we need to get some uh, new light bulbs. Okay. All right. Man, it's tough, huh? It's tough. We can't even, we can't even afford light bulbs, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you asked for that big budget cut. Yeah, so. <laughs> I guess we're out of money. Um... All right. First, I'd like to wish everyone a Happy New Year, my board colleagues, our staff, as well as the community. And uh, welcome back to 2019. We have a lot of work to do this year, and we look forward to doing that. May I get a motion to approve the minutes of the Board of Commissioner meetings for December 10th, 2018, and December 17th, 2018? So moved. Second. Uh, is there any commissioner comment to the motion of appro approving the minutes? Any staff comment? Is there any public comment on the minutes? All right. All those in favor of approving the minutes from the Board of Commissioner meetings for December 10th, 2018, and December 17th, 2018, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes six to nothing. I'll also note uh, Commissioner Clark has let us know that he will not be in attendance this evening. I also uh, want to make mention that this board met in executive session on January 2nd uh, to discuss matters of personnel and we also met just prior to this meeting to discuss matters of personnel and legal and real estate. All right, we will move on to election of the president of the Radnor Township Board of Commissioners. I'll there nominate Lisa Borowski. Second. All right, there is a nomination on the floor for myself. Thank you, gentlemen. Any other nominations for president? All right. Is there any public comment to the motion currently on the floor for the nomination of myself as Board of Pres uh, Commissioners, President of the Board of Commissioners? Any staff comment? Is there any public comment to the nomination on the floor? All right. All those in favor of the nomination of or the approval of myself as <laughs> Radnor Township? Uh, Wait, is this a nomination or is this the vote itself? This is the vote. There's a nomination on the floor. Is there another nomination you'd like to make? Okay. I'd like to make another nomination, but I, I don't think that it would, uh, would carry, so I'm going to forego it. Okay. Um, then I will go ahead and call the vote, seeing that there's been no public comment, staff comment, or commissioner comment. All those in favor of uh, Lisa Borowski as president of the Radnor Township Board of Commissioners, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay, nay. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen, for that vote of confidence or vote of non-confidence. <laughs> <laughs> I will certainly uh, work to try to better gain your confidence in this year. You do uh, a good job, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. I've been trying. Me um, too. I know I had a lot to learn, and I appreciate all those in the community that have uh, provided me with uh, insight and comments, um, as well as uh, my colleagues. All right, election of vice president. Do I have any nominations for vice president of the Radnor Township Board of Commissioners? I nominate Jack Larkin. Second. Okay. Is there any other nominations for vice president? Right. Is there any commissioner comment to the nomination on the floor? Any staff comment? Uh, I, I, I will oh. make a, a comment. Mm -hmm. um, I am going to support uh, Jack's nomination for vice president. Uh, while I, you know, I, I hope we would have gone with a bipartisan board, 
Um, I have had a, a couple conversations with Jack. Jack has, uh, you know, I think he showed bipartisanship over the, the past couple months. Um, he's reached out on a couple issues, and I would hope, uh, you know, the things that we've talked about, um, you know, getting some of the stuff back on track, you know, um, board authority, setting policy, um, following up on issues. You know, I hope that we continue to work together and, and follow through on some of those issues. So, Jack, I, I wish you all the best. I appreciate that. I look forward to it. Well, it's not definite yet, I guess, is it? But um, it sounds like, you know, there's, we're banking on it. Um, well, what, what, I, what I would, I would say that this board having a, a member of the of leadership and the vice president, president, one from each party, uh, really would show that the majority is reaching out and would show inclusivity and res mutual respect and an effort to work together. Um, I think that this nomination and excluding the minority party from leadership uh, shows the exact opposite message that um, uh, uh, an arrangement was made ahead of time and that, th that, you're, that you're not, in fact, interested in a cooperative and uh, collegial and bipartisan effort to uh, advance the interests of the constituents. So I, I'd ask that you reconsider and um, nominate, ha have one of our Democrat uh, colleagues nominate a Republican for uh, Vice President. Well, you've had opportunity to nominate somebody for president as well as vice president. I have not heard the minority party on the board do either. Well, I, in response to that, um, you know, I think one of, one of the goals this year should be not wasting the public's time. I've had conversations with Democratic colleagues, and they've told me what the um, arrangement will be. Uh, Commissioner Booker, have you had conversations? I, I, I share that sentiment. I, okay. It's so, been made clear to us what the, what the arrangement is. So and, again, and, and, and another goal is, you know, why sit up here and play and just be partisan? I mean, play politics. I mean, we know how it's going to go um, for you to sit here and say you haven't nominated anyone. Why nominate somebody if there's no chance and the decision's already been made? My feelings exactly. You don't know if you try. Okay, is there any, any? Nominate someone. I mean, put their name in the hat. I, I, I think that you're doing yourself a disservice, and then you're going to say, woe is me, woe is me, when you didn't even try. It's a cop-out. All right, well, I'll put Jake Abel in for a nomination if, if he will second it. If, so what we're hearing is that, that we might get a vote for this over here to my right. If we have a three to three vote, what would we do then? We would have to table it. Are you making a nomination? I did. I made the nomination. It has not been seconded. Uh, well, I certainly, as someone who has um, participated in the bipartisan leadership for the past year, I have absolutely, uh, I thought that it has worked really well. Um, and had spoken to Commissioner Clark about um, his desire to continue on. He has... Uh, you know, certainly some changes in his, um, you know, personal and professional life that, um, you know, made it in, I think, uh, a, probably more uh, work than he can take on at this moment. And uh, Commissioner Abel, you had specifically said to me when we were talking about uh, leadership roles on the committees that you didn't want any committee leadership roles that you were to, um, you know, with family and your work and whatnot, that that would be too um, cumbersome as well. And you did gratefully accept, um, or hopefully once we vote on that, the leadership for the Public Safety Committee. But I wasn't under the impression that you wanted a leadership role. Well, if, um, if the option, if the board wants to really move in a bipartisan manner, um, I, would, I would take that on. Is there a second for the nomination on the floor? Okay. And, uh, well, I, I'll, I'll, I'll nominate Commissioner Booker then for VP as well. 
Is there a, okay, so we have one nomination on the floor. Was there a second for that? All right, now we have another nomination on the floor, it would appear. Is there a second for that? I, I second for myself. <laughs> All right. Any additional nominations on the floor? All right, so we will take these, um, the nominations in order of they being received. So the first one is the nomination of Commissioner Larkin, Larkin for Vice President. Is there any additional commissioner comment? Is there any staff comment? Is there any public comment on the nomination for Commissioner Larkin as Vice President? All right, I will go ahead and call the vote. All those in favor of Commissioner Larkin as Vice President, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. Motion passes five to one. So I, I never get a vote then? It would appear not. I, again, wasted four minutes <laughs> for partisan politics. All right, gentlemen. Oh, just we, we shouldn't waste the time. Jake's right. We shouldn't waste the time, Sean, if we, you know, if you're serious about it. You nominated yourself, so. I didn't nominate. Or, or you voted okay, for Okay, I think that we can move on now, gentlemen, please. Um, all right, uh, Commissioner Larkin, would you like to move to the vice president's seat here? Or are you comfortable sitting there? Okay. Okay. The next is the, uh, yes, congratulations, Commissioner Larkin. Thank you for stepping forward. All right. <clears throat> Next, the uh, smattering of applause. <laughs> the appointment of township solicitor. Um, are there is the? Um, do I take a nomination for this? No. We, with the appointment of uh, to reappoint Grimbean and Thatcher as the uh, township solicitor. So, so moved. Second. Okay. There's a motion on the floor. Any commissioner comment? So one of the things that we had mentioned was that we were going to be looking to um, send out RFPs and continue the process of choosing a solicitor or continuing with our existing solicitor as part of the budget process that we're going to be looking at going forward. Um, I want to underscore that this is not the end of the conversation, even for calendar 2019 necessarily, but at the moment we're, we're going to have to wait until that budget process gets farther along. Do, do, we, do we have a... So you're saying we're going to do another RFP process on the solicitor? Yeah, so when, when we had talked about that in the personnel discussion that we had had before, I think that the consensus was that we were interested in looking for additional RFPs, um, including from Grimbean. Um, it's not that we're dissatisfied. It's not that I'm dissatisfied with them anyway. I don't want to say that at all. Um, I think they're doing a good job. I know others disagree. But, um, yeah, I just want to underscore that this is not for calendar year 2019, we're putting this behind us. We will be looking at this as well as a lot of other aspects of the budget going forward. Do we, do we have a time frame on when we would have an RFP for the solicitor process? So at, the, when, at our meeting when we discussed some of, um, or we talked about some of the, this, we want to have this as part of the budget discussions. Are there options that, uh, you know, for triaging work, giving work to other people, is there ways, and all of this I think will be around the idea of um, budget, how can, it, you know, are there ways that we can save money? Um, we know we have some significant uh, financial challenges that we're going to be that we're looking at and is this something that we can, we can look at as well. So I don't know that there's definitely a timeline right now. Um, we will put these on for the meetings that we're going to be having, the first one we have next week, and to start to talk about this and see, you know, what direction we want to go as a board. Yeah, that leaves me a, a bit uncomfortable. I think the current solicitor was brought back on an interim basis and in, in May, and that was the last we heard about that process. So we went seven months without even hearing about um, an RFP. Uh, you know, I'd be more comfortable if I had, if, if we were able to flush out and give a little bit more detail on, you know, are we looking at 90 days? Uh, is this something that we're hoping to have done by the end of the year? 
I would definitely say before the end of the year, I don't think that 90 days is offensive. I, maybe we have the conversation specifically at um, the special budget meeting that we have scheduled coming up. So I don't, is our next meeting a special budget meeting or is it the one following that? The 14th, the next okay. one, yeah. So maybe we have the conversation then and like I say, I wouldn't be offended by 90 days request for RFP. I want to stress I'm happy with the job that Grim Bean is doing. I'm not saying I want to see lots of other uh, proposals so that we can pick somebody better. I think they're doing great. I just know that this has been a discussion topic in the past, and we said we were going to explore other options. So, Any other additional commissioner comment to the nomination or the yes. appointment on the floor? Back earlier this year, I think it was in May, right? Yes, it was in May. Or last year, not earlier, 19, in 2018, in um, April and May, we did actually go and request proposals for professional services, for all professional services. And we did, at that time, appoint a, a new solicitor. And my vote was to appoint the new solicitor and we actually had a majority to do that. Um, that vote was never rescinded. Um, however, it, the, the, the hiring of the new solicitor for the township was never undertaken. And I, th I thought, and then and I still think now, mis inappropriately, was, was not undertaken. So at this point, I will be consistent with my prior vote to have new counsel for this township for solicitor going forward. Many people and all of you know that I have filed an appeal of the PLO zoning amendment in Common Pleas Court, which is my right as a resident, affected directly thereby, and continue to make the case that the zoning amendment was improperly adopted and is detrimental to the health, general health and general welfare of the constituents as well as uh, not in conformity with the comprehensive plan. Secondly, I have filed an appeal to the University of Pennsylvania's final plan development f uh, approval by this board and that appeal is also pending at Common Pleas Court. That appeal was with respect to technical issues of steep slope com com compliance and, and other technical items. My vote tonight in no way reflects in any way upon counsel for the township on those particular issues. So my vote is in no way, and I pass no judgment and make no comment on counsel for the township with respect to those two appeals that are currently pending. Okay, any other comment? Is there any staff comment to the nomination on the floor? Or the motion, excuse me. Any public comment to the motion on the floor? All right, all those in favor of the reappointment of Grimbean and Thatcher as township solicitor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Motion passes four to two. Appointment of township labor attorney. Um, we have the, gone through the RFP process. Um, Mr. Zinkowski, do you want to talk a little bit about that for us? And sure. the recommendation. Um, we had gone through the RFP process and have uh, gone through the qualifications looked at the proposals that were submitted. There were interviews that had taken place on those firms. Um, and then uh, there was an opportunity then for board members to participate in those interviews. Um, and then a recommendation uh, is being made then uh, for the board uh, to retain the current labor council that uh, our township uses with uh, Joe Rudolph and his firm and their firm. Okay. May I get a motion to approve the recommendation of reappointment of Clark Hill as the township labor attorney? 
So moved. Is there a second for that? Seconded. All right. Any commissioner comment or any additional firms? Do you please? Well, again, so as not to waste the time of the public and this board, I will not make a, a motion for another firm, although we did interview and, and uh, my preference would be for the other firm. Okay. Any com additional commissioner, com or is there any comment to the motion on the floor of the reappointment of Clark Hill as a township labor attorney? Uh, and I'll just say based on the interviews of the two firms uh, that came before this board, uh, I am not going to support the recommendation. I thought the, the other firm that came in, um, I mean, they just, uh, I, I was really impressed with their presentation, their knowledge, um, the resources they had to put toward uh, uh, issues. And, you know, they represent a lot of surrounding townships and um, they get glowing reviews from, from everybody I've talked to. So I know a little bit about both firms. I thought that they were both fantastic. I think we would be well served by either one of the two of them, frankly. I just, I'm going to defer to staff on this one. They have an existing relationship um, and we've been well served. That being said, um, yeah, I could happily go either way. I just don't want to destroy the existing relationship that we have. Do we make public the contract for um, Joe Rudolph's firm? Was it Clark Hill, I think? Is that who it is? It's a public document. So someone requested it. I, so they'd do a right to know to find it. Yeah. One of the or, one of the issues that I heard at our last meeting was that it's a two-year commitment on this contract and that there's also, um, which I think is unusual, but maybe not, uh, the provision for an, an $1,800 retainer monthly. Um, is that still in there? Is that the contract? And um, it also had a 30-day notice clause. So those are the three terms that I heard were the case. I do not know if that's the case or not. but. Is that the case? And if not, if that's if those provisions are not included, then which ones are and which ones aren't? So the what, three provisions too. You talked about 30-day notice. Yes, that was in the spe specification that the board did review. Uh, that was not removed. Uh, the $1,800 retainer is in there, uh, which is well served by the township. I believe it's a good good move by the township. Um, and I'm not sure what your third question was. Two-year contract. Two contract. That's correct. With 30-day notice to terminate. Well, I'm I'm surprised that we haven't heard more from Solicitor Rice. I don't think that he has those those terms, but maybe he does. I can tell you that back in May, uh, John Rice indicated that his firm was on an at-will, without notice contract. So I I think that. As a, our, our attorney, we should not need to give 30 days. So I would disagree with that. I also disagree with a commitment of $1,800 every month for special counsel. I, I, I disagree that, that that is beneficial to the taxpayers. And what I can say from my experience as a lawyer for 20 years is that that guarantees that will contact and, and spend money every month. And that we may, there may be months where we don't need anyone. I think we'd be better off not having an open check for $1,800 every month to one council. And uh, also, we should be year to year. Why would we have a two-year contract when our solicitor goes from year to year? I, I don't know why we'd have a two-year commitment. Um, so those three provisions, I think, are um, not consistent with our goal to represent the community in in most favorable light. Also, I was disappointed with the uh, a letter that uh, attorney 
Rudolph had prepared for our prior um, superintendent of police that was a confidential document that was prepared in connection with an ethics investigation that was leaked to the Democrat committee in Radnor and used, uh, weaponized in, in an attempt to uh, change an election. Uh, Joe Rudolph was the, uh, and his firm wrote that letter for the chief and um, uh, Joe offered no explanation as to uh, how that got out into the public domain and, and nor did he seem concerned about it. So um, for those reasons, I think that we should, and, and others, which I won't elaborate on, uh, for those reasons, I think we should um, uh, have a different counsel or we should at least modify the contract so that it's no better than the solicitor's contract. Madam President, if I may? Yes. Um, in looking out after the best interests of the taxpayers' dollars, um, the $1,800 retainer is well served as not saying any statements about attorneys, but I'm sure they would find their way to actually bill more than that based on my 20 year, 28 years of experience. Also, too, if, and I know the commissioner is not involved nor um, really gets involved very much with or asking the questions until now, um, there are a lot of staff issues, personnel issues that we have as a township that we have been able to resolve uh, through this retainer that has avoided any unfair labor practices in which this township has enjoyed eight and a half years of no unfair labor practices, any significant grievances whatsoever. Uh, we have also, as this board is aware, you have authorized the termination of a police officer um, in which that went unopposed by the FOP. Um, there are a lot of issues that go on as this township. Uh, I'm sure that um, we have gotten good advice because we could take a stand in a position to fight these and that would also cost us and at times fifty to a hundred thousand dollars per case. So I think it's well served. We are involved with a lot of programs that involve personnel. We bring on as this board is aware uh, with our, I'll use one example, our day camp program. There are a lot of staff that are brought on. There are issues that come up that need guidance and direction on. So that is all covered under the retainer. Um, I will speak on the issue about, um, I think Commissioner Booker spoke about Joe Rudolph writing a a letter or something I think that was answered to you of why he didn't know that so but also too that after what over hundred thirty thousand dollars of ethics complaints that somehow staff gets looped into these when it's all political in nature uh, we should look at those expenses and protecting the taxpayers dollars for those because uh, and staff tries to stay out of that and does stay out of that except when invited in and it's interesting on how when the staff has raised those issues, the board has never addressed those concerns and they still sit out there today unaddressed, unanswered. I'd like to respond to Manager uh, Zinkowski's oh, I comments. Think that's, I, I, I think we're done with the conversation. No, 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 no. It was no, specific, we should specific, stay specific statements gentlemen. made. We should stay specifically now, the, on the, facts. The, the, the statements, factual. the statements, I, I'm not Let's sure what, what, what was brought in Point of order, Commissioner point, Booker. Point of order, Commissioner yes. Booker, please. Please. Does I, this have anything to do with the nomination of the floor on the floor of Clark Hill as the labor attorney? So, so, Does Ms. Borowski, I, I don't know why you would gavel me when you could have made asked that same question of, of um, Mr. Zinkowski. What in the heck did any of that have to do with, with Joe Rudolph? I, I'm not sure. Oh, I was answered, talking about Joe Rudolph. Your, that, holds your, that answered all your questions. No, you said that the you questioned the 1800 retainer. I, I did. Correct. I did so, answer. So I think you needed to know that when you say protecting the taxpayers' dollars, as though staff or those we are not protecting the taxpayers' dollars, and you approved that contract from from. Joe Rudolph and his firm. Uh, I, so you I, were aware okay. of that. So I was unaware Zinkowski. of that situation. I'm aware Zinkowski. of it now. So, and but Mr. the Parker. issue is, is when you raise questions and concerns, and then you bring the superintendent of police into it. Well, then we're we're into an area to where we should have factual information that is presented outward. I, I have 100% I have factual information. You have right, can we please wrap not, this up? All right, we true. need gentlemen. Let's wrap this up. I have a comment I'd like to make. Please, let's wrap this up. Well, fine. Let me let's 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 wrap this up. So. We have Mr. Um, um, Incivility himself, 
Mr. Nagel there saying, well, how could he not know about the co Joe Rudolph's contract? Never been given a copy of Joe Rudolph's contract. The first time I heard that there was an $1,800 a month commitment to special counsel was when we finally did an RFP, which was not done prior to my being on the board, Commissioner Nagel. When I found out about this, and I continued to take the position, we should not make a commitment of $1,800 a month to a lawyer. I don't know it, it, which we pay, whether we call him or not, but I can assure you that it's out of the control of the Board of Commissioners how often people call and utilize that. Moreover, we shouldn't make a commitment to do that. We don't need to make a commitment every month of, of every year to, to contact and have questions answered. We should be able to handle that. That's my view. I don't believe that we should have that in there. And I don't see why we would fight to keep that in there. There's, there's no need for it. When we, we have a lawyer, he's ready to work for us whenever we call him. We don't need to guarantee $1,800 a month. So if, if we are going to do this, should we do this for the solicitor as well? Why, why do we have a, is there a, is there a retainer for the solicitor right now? Yes, there okay, is. Okay, and, and what is that? Let's get. Let's hear that. How much? How much is that? So that's five thousand. We're voting on the labor attorney Can now. Can we please? <laughs> okay. Gentlemen. So, so we talk about we talk about expenses, and let's make it clear to the public what the expenses are. Now, for our solicitor, you have a better argument because for whatever reason we've decided that he should attend every meeting. That's not the case with special counsel with special labor counsel. There is no, we have meetings every month, two, two meetings, and now we've scheduled 10 extra ones. The solicitor attends those meetings, so it's a slightly different case, although I would still make the same, the same argument. What we should not be in the business of as politicians and as commissioners is guaranteeing payment to contractors to the township. That's not what we're, our job is. Our job is to administer, to run the government in the most efficient, cost-effective way possible. Guaranteed payments is not the best way to go. That doesn't reduce the size of government. It doesn't make more accountability. It doesn't ensure that the taxpayers are going to spend the least amount. That's my opinion, and I was elected to purvey this opinion. So that's that's the case. Now, okay. now I'm, I'm I'm let's not I'm ready to drop it. But if somebody says that comes back, then we'll have to raise it again. So. Okay. Thank you. I'm I ready. think you've made your point abundantly clear. Two things I'd like to bring up. One is the whether it's a one-year contract or two doesn't really matter because we have a 30-day provision to get out of it. Uh, the second point is I actually favored the second firm and had some very long discussions with uh, Bob and Bill about it. And that's uh, why I've come to the position that we'll continue with Mr. Rudolph. Um, end of statement. Okay, thank you. Um, so I had the opportunity to attend the, uh, the meeting where we interviewed both of the firms that put forward. I agree with Commissioner Larkin. They both um, were excellent, would do a very good job for us. Uh, my decision is purely based honestly on um, the financials, uh, the financial aspect. Uh, Clark Hill came in significantly less than the other firm. Um, their hourly rate is significantly less. Um, and I think that, you know, to the concern of a retainer, if uh, we get the legal bills, Every, with every um, board packet every month. So I think that we can look at those and monitor them. If we think that that is not working out for us, then that's something that we can look at and re-examine. But um, given the staff who deals, uh, it sounds like pretty consistently with, not just for um, matters of our police, which I think is very important, um, but matters of our personnel and our staff, I think that the fact that we haven't had any, um, you know, labor judgments or anything like that, any significant complaints against us, I think that that is, 
I think that's a testament to good labor council, uh, council giving good advice to staff who, when they need it and they ask for it. And to me, that is fiscally responsible when it comes to saving our taxpayers money and not having to pay for additional litigation on, um, you know, uh, labor, uh, labor complaints and grievances against the township and against staff. So that is why I'll be supporting Clark Hill. Again, if we have a 30 day out and at some point the arrangement is no, no longer works for the Board of Commissioners and the township, then we definitely have an out. So I will be supporting uh, reappointment of Clark Hill this evening. Ms. Brasky, just one point on the retainer. If we sign that contract, you will not be able to revisit that $1,800 commitment per month. That's in the contract. Can I? So I, I would actually disagree with that comment, Rich, because they have a 30 day out. So you can, in theory, essentially terminate them and then renegotiate, which not saying you want to do, but it is, but, but it is, but it is something, a way for us to renegotiate. My question to, my first question, I guess, is to Bob Sinkowski. What was the total amount, approximately, that we spent last year in labor? I, I'd, I'd have to get you that number. Okay. I mean, w was, was there ever, then the follow-up would be, was there ever a month where we didn't exhaust that retainer? Um, it's to our understanding, there's only been three months where we did not, they did not go over the retainer. Okay, and do you know what happened? Okay. Uh, over th 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 Rich, let me ask a question. So what happens with that retainer? Is it carried forward, do you know, or do we lose it? That's something that we would just lose on okay. those. So but then, then we, okay. the other so side then, would then, be then is in fairness, will, okay. okay. Then in fairness to Rich, that is a waste of money. So that is definitely something that we should at least, you know, look at and, and talk to him going forward because then it, if it's three months, that's 25% of the time, then it is too high. But that's not and a then, waste of money unless but, the net is that you end up spending money. If in three particular, like if we could time the market essentially and say we're going to flip off the retainer this month because well, we don't okay, have those. Well, okay, fair. So you're, saying that we, so you're saying that we get a lower hourly rate because we do have the retainer? We get a massively lower hourly rate. Okay, and I so very then, much want to incentivize our staff to call and ask questions when they have them so that we don't spend okay, a lot of money well then, on litigators. Then thank you for but clarifying that. I think just also too, we have 33 months we'd have to subsidize them. So if we took a credit on three months, 33 months, we would be subsidized, we'd be spending okay. more than. I mean, I think this is good that we get this all out in sure. the open because it, it is our money, it is the people's money. So. Um, all that being said, I did I did not hear um, uh, Joe speak, but I did hear the first firm. And again, I'll agree with Lisa, and I will agree with Jack. Um, I was impressed by them, but I think that we have a we have an attorney who knows what's going on, who knows the township, he knows the people, and for us to switch what there's no when there's no real need to do so would just be creating excess work. So I will be voting to keep Joe on as our labor as our labor attorney. Madam President, if I may, all, all the firms that submitted proposals are all very good firms. Those that interviewed were all very good firms. Okay, Bob, any additional? Bob, Bob do, you have the, um, do you have the hourly rates of the two firms? So, I mean, that's not significant. We have 290. Uh, no retainer, and then there's a uh, rate of 275 for Clark Hill. Okay, thanks. I would say the issue is not the retainer, it's how often we use counsel. And until we start controlling how often we call, what we call for, what we use counsel for, we won't have control of this. The 1800 actually encourages the ex excessive use of counsel. And the number that Joe Rudolph mentioned was 170,000 approximately, he said, for last year. Commissioner Fari. Okay, any additional comment to the motion on the floor? Any staff comment to the motion on the floor? Any public comment to the motion on the floor? And I'll call the vote. All those in favor of reappointing Clark Hill as a township labor attorney, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes four to two. Appointment of Township Secretary and designation of an Assistant Secretary. Uh, Township Secretary is Mr. Zinkowski. 
Um, and Mr. White, as Assistant Township Secretary, may I get a motion to, to uh, approve? Second. Any comment? I have comment on this. I, I've actually been asked by members of the public who the secretary is and when determined that it was the manager, um, asked why the manager would be the secretary. So does anyone have the information why is it that we are appointing our secretary as the, the township manager and is there any conflict in that? I guess I would ask Commissioner or um, I'd beg the leave of Commissioner Borowski to pose that question to Solicitor Rice, uh, not respecting that I'm not directing him to, to respond to that, but perhaps he could shed some light on how that is. Well, in the charter, you have a position called secretary, and most municipalities have someone called the township secretary. Uh, it has to be a registered township elector. Um, the township secretary serves as secretary to the board and keeper of the township seal and shall attest to official actions taken by the board. Township secretary shall maintain and publish a calendar for regular meetings of boards, commissions, and authorities and shall be custodian of the records and minutes of the same. Um, that's how your township secretary is defined. Does it need to be the manager? It doesn't have to be the manager. I can tell you in many, many townships, it is the township manager, township manager slash secretary. This is not unusual. Um, there's really no conflict between township manager and this position as defined in the charter. What is the purpose of the secretary attesting to, what was that, attesting to township documents? What does it say, attest to what? Attest to official actions taken by the board. Attest to official actions. So that would include all contracts, ordinances, resolutions, et cetera. So what, what's the significance of the secretary attesting? Is there any legal authority to that attest or is that merely perfunctory? No, it's a, it's a uh, uh, acknowledgement by the township secretary that the document that's being attested to is a true and correct copy or original of some action of the board, be it an ordinance, be it a resolution. We, we submit grants to DEP from time to time and there's forms that the township secretary has to attest to. Um, something that, that's pretty common in Pennsylvania local it's, government. So it's like a, it's like a notary. As a, it's, there's no legal significance to it other than an, affir an, an a, a affirmation or a test that this is a true document of the township. It's not a falsified document. That the secretary has examined the records of the township and attested it's true and correct. But there's no legal significance to it. That is the legal significance. What I there's, no, there's no, um, it doesn't, it's so 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 the legal Doesn't significance is power. that it's only necessary to show that it's a true and correct copy of a document but in no way does it relate to the underlying substance of those documents right correct right and the documents are typically actions by the board ordinances in most cases um, but other types of things that require a township secretary and the seal of the township to be placed on it. But there's no, there's, it, doesn't, it doesn't need to be attested to to make it a legal, or so you're saying it does, it's, it needs to be uh, attested to in order for it to be a legal action of the township. Until that's done, it, it doesn't, it's... No, 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 no. So it's not attested. It, it, it's, it's just an acknowledgement that it's a true and correct copy of a document that's been approved or some action of the board. It doesn't, it's not an acknowledgement that the terms and conditions have been the, met or complied under, with the underlying contract or legal or in compliance with law. It's just an acknowledgement that that's an action of the board that's been taken. And again, the purpose of that would be so in case somebody's falsified documents. This would that's this is intended. So the intent of it is to stop from falsified township documents from being purveyed. That would be that would be part of it. 
Okay, any additional comment to the motion on the floor? I mean, I'd, like to, I'd just like to say that I think, Bob, you've done a great job, and, and I can speak, say the same thing about Bill White. So uh, you have my over, both of you have my overwhelming support. Thank you for, for all that you do and your dedication. Is there, is there someone who would be able to take this role that it wouldn't be so much of a burden to the township manager who is working on other things? What, what, what other methodology could we have that would, why wouldn't Jen, Jen DiStefano be able to be secretary? Got to be an elector. Um, so that wouldn't preclude anyone from the public then either, right? Could be uh, any township registered elector. Um, you know, the one thing that happens with this position is some of the work gets delegated by Bob to Jennifer, such as the meeting minutes, uh, and things like that. So it's not just Bob attesting to documents or ordinances. There's other things that get delegated in his office in his role as the township secretary, um, township manager. Okay, any additional comment to the motion on the floor? Any staff comment to the motion on the floor? Any public comment? And I'll call the vote. Madam I'll President, just yes. to note, there is no compensation for that. So. Oh. Okay, thank you. All those in favor of. Bob, Bob you get a nice title. <laughs> and the township seal. <laughs> I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor of appointing uh, Bob Sinkowski Township Secretary and Bill White Assistant Township Secretary, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes six to nothing. Appointments to uh, chair and members of standing committees, and that would be the standing committees of the Radnor Township Board of Commissioners. Um, that, in, that list was included in the packet and reflect, unless somebody has a, a different opinion this evening, the um, a, a desires of each board member. They were asked what committees they wanted to serve on. We agreed upon um, chairs of those committees and I think last year we started utilizing committees uh, to the advantage you know, of hearing um, different uh, legislative issues or development issues prior to them coming to the Board of Commissioners. I think it's a good opportunity for the public to be able to have more say and more um, in, input into these issues before they get to our level. So my hope is that those that are chairing these committees will continue to um, engage with them and engage even at an even larger scale so that we can uh, get some of these issues resolved prior to them coming to the board, or at least have input. I'm sorry, they won't get resolved, but at least they will have community input and um, prior to coming to our level. Is there anyone that feels I need to read the entire list of everyone? Well, uh, Commissioner Borowski, my apologies, but my computer power just ran out, and I okay. did not print that out, so I don't have it in front of me. If you could I'm certainly give glad me to a, read the, it. Uh, do you want this little? Or, or, or we, let me just, I just plug this in so it'll come up in a second. Okay. Well, can I go in the interim, can I go ahead and get a motion uh, to the appointments, to approve the appointments and uh, the chair and members of standing committees? So moved. Second? Second. Thank you. Is there any commissioner comment to the motion on the floor? Uh, again, can I see that comment? Would you like this to is gonna, It's going to take five minutes. It was distributed in our packet. Uh, yeah, my pa okay. I didn't print out my packet. Oh, okay. It was on the computer and okay. it ran out of power. Jason, while you're waiting, could those be read out to the public? I can certainly do that. Okay, community development. Chair is Rich Booker. Members are Luke Clark, Sean Farhi. Finance and Audit is uh, the Committee of the Whole. Library, myself as chair, Rich Booker, Jack Larkin. Open space, Sean Farhi, chair. 
Lisa Borowski, John Nagel, Parks and Rec, Luke Clark Chair, Jake Abel, John Nagel, Personnel Administration, John Nagel Chair, Jake Abel, Jack Larkin, Public Health, John Nagel Chair, Sean Farhi, Jack Larkin, Public Safety, Jake Abel Chair, Lisa Borowski, Luke Clark, Public Works and Sewer, Jack Larkin Chair, Rich Booker, Lisa Borowski. And uh, we also have Commissioner representation at two boards and commissions. That would be Shade Tree is myself and Commissioner Booker, and the VU Care Committee is Sean Farhi. I know, we got it. Is there any comments, Commissioner comment to the motion on the floor? RHM is not on there. Did, did you hear from Don Curley on RHM? RHM is not a board committee. It's not a board committee. That is a, that's a, that did, would, did we hear from Commissioner? That will be, we're voting on that next. That's the next thing. So let's stick with what the motion on the floor. You good with that? Any comments? Is there any commissioner comment? Everyone good. Any staff comment to the list? The standing committees. Any public comment? All right, I'll call the vote. All those in favor of approving the appointments to chair and members of standing committees as I read out and was included in everyone's packet for this evening's meeting, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes six to nothing. Reappointments to boards and commissions. Sean, did you have something you needed to say? Yeah, um, yeah, I didn't say this before when you were nominated or when you won the presidency again, but thank you for everything that you do, including putting together this list, giving me this stuff, um, and doing what you do. I think that uh, it's a thankless job, so let me say thank you, and I apologize for it being belated, but thank you. Well, thank you, and for... It's no longer thankless. <laughs> it is no longer thankless, and... Uh, I will thank Bob and Jennifer, who uh, do a very good job at helping keep it all organized as well. Um, all right, <clears throat> vacancies, to, uh, where are we? All right, we're up to reappointments to boards and commissions. So that was also included in everyone's packet. It was in the packet for this evening as well. May I, you've got it, you're good? All right, good. All right, so we have a list of several individuals who are up for reappointment, meaning they have served one full term and are and eligible for a second term. I will go ahead and read out the names, just in case anyone needs to hear it, uh, before I ask for a motion. So we have Joan Capuzzi for the Board of Health, Catherine Durr, Board of Health, Brian Kirby, the Citizens Communication Council, Bob Thompson, Thomason, Citizens Communication Council, Suzette Margolis, Citizens Communication Council, Claire Gurton, Parks and Rec, Mary Coe, Parks and Rec, Liz Springer, Planning Commission, Charlie Falcone, Planning Commission, Joseph Vogel, did I say that right? Rental Housing Appeals Board, Eileen Brett, Shade Tree Commission, and Brad Delizia, Zoning Hearing Board. And I would just like to add um, our sincere thanks, or the sincere thanks, uh, of the board and the township to everyone who serves on these commissions. Their work is invaluable and um, we are grateful for all of their uh, contributions of their time and talent certainly to the township. So may I go ahead and get a motion to approve the reappointments well, to boards and commissions. If you want to pull one person, how are you going to, how are you going to handle that? <clears throat> Yeah, so who would you like to, would you like to make a motion to approve everyone and remove the individual you'd like to discuss further? Why don't you do it like the um, consent agenda and say, would anyone like to pull a person? I think that's what I just said. Well, you asked me to make the motion for it, no. But you, before we make the motion, you say, would anyone like to pull, I will pull Charles okay. Falcone from Planning Commission, that's one I would pull. Okay. Is there anyone else that anyone would like to pull? All right. May I get a motion to approve the list as read minus Charles Falcone? May I get a second? Okay. Any commissioner comment to the list as approved or the list as read minus Charles Falcone? 
which is the motion on the floor. Any staff comment? Any commissioner comment? Or excuse me, public comment. <laughs> All right, being that, I'll call the vote. All those in favor of reappointing uh, the reappointments to the boards and commissions, as I read, minus Charles Falcone, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes six to nothing. I move to uh, reappoint Charles Falcone. Second. All right, there is a motion on the floor to reappoint Charles Falcone. Any commissioner comment? Charles Falcone is the father of David Falcone, a lawyer from Saul Ewing, a development attorney who appears regularly before the board and the planning commission, necessitating frequent uh, abstentions and, um, recu and or recusals from the planning commission. Um, to me, this is not a desirable condition. One of the one of the um, uh, most often uh, used attorneys for development in the township to have his father uh, be a member of the planning commission, which he's appearing before to, to have various plans approved, I think certainly is a conflict. And even when Mr. Falcone recuses himself, there is continues to be a conflict as he goes to the back and it still makes his his viewpoint known through um, visual cues, et cetera. Um, in any event, we should avoid this altogether. There's no reason that we can't find other people to be on the Planning Commission whose sons are not uh, development attorneys often appearing before the Board of Commission. So I, I would ask that we seek to find another person rather than uh, to continue with this conflict in the instances where uh, Dave Falcone uh, represents a developer for the township uh, that appears before the, the Planning Commission especially. So I, I'd move that we, uh, I, I would, I would. There is a motion on the floor. I would, I would urge my colleagues to, uh, to not approve this appointment and to seek another, another person. He's already been on for five years. Any additional comment? to the motion on the floor. Any staff comment? Is there any public comment? Good Sarah Pilling from Garrett Hill. I've been coming to both zoning and planning since about the year 2000. And what I have, what I appreciate about Charles Falcone is his extreme knowledge He's hard-nosed in a good way. He does not give easily. And he and I have talked about he being David's father. And he's very careful to separate himself from any issue when David, principally Penn Med, comes in and handles it. And so I think Rich has, in my opinion, Rich has a conflict of interest. But I think Charles is a very solid member of planning, and it would be the detriment of planning in the planning process if Charles was not reappointed. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Any additional public comment? I'd all call the vote. All those in favor of reappointing Charles Falcone to the Planning Commission, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. All those opposed? Nay? nay. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't realize the nod, head nod was a nay. Okay. Motion passes five to one. All right, next we are going to do the appointments to the boards and commissions. So after, over the past several weeks, we've had a number of people come in and interview for several of our vacancies that we have on our boards. So we will take each one of these individually. Um, I would like to go ahead and put into nomination the name of Dan Cuff to fill a vacancy on the Code Appeals Board. So moved. Second. You want to do them all together? There's only four. Okay. All right. I think we need to do them individually. 
So I'm going to go ahead. At, so is there any comment on, so we have a motion on the floor for Dan Cuff. Dan is a master electrician and would fill that role, uh, which is a vacancy on the Code Appeals Board. It is a five-year term. Is there any um, commissioner comment on Dan Cuff's nomination? Any staff comment? Any public comment? All those in favor of Dan Cuff to be appointed to the Code Appeals Board, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes six to nothing. Planning Commission, Lane Vines. May I get a motion to approve Lane Vines for the Planning Commission? All right, there's a motion on the floor. Right. Any comment to Lane Vines serving on the Planning Commission? Again, this is a, this is a four-year term, I believe. Yes, four-year. Well, yes, we just, we, dis we, term. we discussed this, Linda. I mean, uh, Lisa, I thought we, we said that he would come and interview. He never interviewed for the Planning Commission. He interviewed for Board of Health, if you recall. I think there was consensus from the board that we did not need him to come in and interview again. But we, we, didn't, we didn't discuss any of his interest or qualifications in Planning Commission. We did when he came in. We discussed it um, with him when he came in to interview. I, I think that when you we, mentioned, would you be interested in anything else? And he said no at the time. But other than that, I don't recall that we discussed any particulars. No, we did discuss planning with him. I don't, I don't think we did. Okay. We discussed. Well, I think that, so can, we can did we mention to him the planning, and he did mention his interest in that. Um, he then followed up with an email to myself and to Commissioner Clark expressing his interest in planning. Um, we had appointed him to the Board of Health, which he then resigned from in order to fulfill, to uh, be considered for the Planning Commission. So we uh, discussed it in, um, as part of our personnel discussion. It was consensus of the board that we did not need him to come back in and interview. So we, because we already spoke with him once. <laughs> so, um, Hence, here he is. Again, with all, with all due respect, Madam President of the Board, I, my recollection is he came, he, he interviewed for the Board of Health, and at the time, uh, we, we asked if he would be interested in anything else, and he said no, he wasn't. He was applying for the Board of Health, and he was appointed to the Board of Health. Um, and that it was only subsequent to that that um, you reached out and he expressed interest in, in the Planning Commission. And I'm not saying that he wouldn't be a good fit, but I, I don't know if he would be a good fit. He's, he is an attorney. I know that he's not, is not an engineer, but I, I don't know what his qualifications or, or, or even his interest in, in that. So I, I would like to interview him and understand better, you know, the fit that we're proposing here. Is there consensus of the board to bring Lane Vines back in? Commissioner Booker, thank you for your suggestion. There is no consensus of the board to bring Lane Vines back in. The motion stands. May, may I ask why there would not want to be an interview on that? Because we've already spoken to him. Because he did say that he was interested in planning at the time. I don't feel like I need anything additional. Those meetings are far too long because we're dealing with actual matters of importance. Bring somebody back in to ask him the same questions again a second time is not a good use of our time, nor is this conversation. Well, again, Commissioner... Larkin, we didn't ask any questions about planning. We asked about Board of Health. And so are you saying that the Planning Commission is unimportant? That's what I heard you say, that the Planning Commission Mr. is unimportant. Mr. Booker, I think you've... Um, Rich, have you reached out to him individually? I, I, I have mean, not. I, ha I have well, not reached out to him. Be, uh, you know, I mean, well, you you, I, I guess I, I, I thought, I thought Gentlemen. My, Gen my recollection was that we agreed he would Mr. come back Booker, for another, another interview. No, that is not what, we dis what was discussed. You were at that meeting when we discussed it. So there is no consensus on this board to bring him back in. Unfortunately, we do not agree with you. So we will go ahead and move on. Is there any additional commissioner comment to the motion on the floor of Lane Vines for the Planning Commission? Is there any staff comment? Is there any public comment? I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor of Lane Vines being appointed to the Planning Commission for a four-year four term, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Are you nod. voting? Are you abstaining? Do the head nod. What are you doing? Abstain. And your reason for abstaining? 
What is your conflict? I, I've made, this, this, my reason for abstaining is, is clear, that we have not interviewed the candidate, and I have no n direct knowledge of his interest, qualifications, or uh, his, his applicability to the position. So I, I'd like, so unlike okay, the others the on this board, I, I, wanna, I wanna on. actually know what the person the interests <laughs> are and his qualifications for such an important role. I'd like to talk to him before we appoint him. Okay, thank it's you, you've made your point. You've made your point. Thank we you. You, you asked the question, so I'm, I'm asking, answering okay. it for you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Motion passes five to nothing with one abstention. Thank you. Environmental Advisory Board. Uh, we had two candidates that came in and interviewed or we, for that position. Um, we have Sarah Pilling and we have Emily... Uh, Marks. <clears throat> so, may I get a motion for the appointment of Emily Marks and Sarah Pilling to fill the two vacancies we have on the Environmental Advisory Board? So, so move. Or second. second. Okay. okay. Whichever. Somewhere in there is a motion and a second. Um, any comment to the appointment of Emily Marks and Sarah Pilling to the, um, which are five year terms? I'm, I'm not sure. Are they five-year or four-year for EAC? I'm going to guess they're five-year terms. Um, the Environmental Advisory Board, any comment? Any staff comment? Any public comment? All right, all those in favor of appointing Sarah Pilling and Emily Marks to the Envi Environmental Advisory Board, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes six to nothing. Right, congratulations. Thank you, Sarah, for service. And thank you to all those who have volu will volunteer their time to serving the uh, community. All right. Seeing that there is no additional business. I thought we'd do a vacancy chair. What's John? I know that we I s spoke to you about that or Bob. What's going to? The, the charter requires that to be done annually either at the reorg meeting or as soon thereafter as possible. Okay, can we put that on the agenda that should for be next on the next meeting? We can put it on the agenda for the next meeting. That sounds good. All right. And I, I just have two, two issues to address. Um, something that we've talked about for the last several weeks is uh, an evaluation of the manager. Do we have a time frame on when the commissioners will be able to put together um, the evaluation, uh, which I would hope, you know, our expectations of the manager would be made public since my understanding is that the board hasn't done that, done that in the past several years. So all of the commissioners, as you well know, participated in and have given me their evaluation of the man township manager. Um, you chose not to participate in that. So we will be uh, reviewing that with him. Uh, at our meeting prior on our at our uh, exec session prior to the 28th. So I, I chose not to do an evaluation on expectations I have never given the township manager. I'm saying are we going to set expectations for this year for the township manager? Myself and uh, Commissioner Larkin will examine that um, that discussion and we will have that in our exact session. We're also looking to have a goal setting session as a board. Um, we were supposed to have one, I believe, in no last November. And uh, our facilitator, unfortunately, took ill. But we are looking for a new date for that for this year. Can, can we have a commitment to have our expectations in 30 days? Well, how so about the we facilitator? Have a, we have a personnel and administration committee. Commissioner Nagel, would you be willing to um, sure. Pull that commission that a meeting together. Sure. What about our facilitator? Abel, you, you sit on that committee. You can certainly um, help frame that conversation. How about that? So, Lisa, what is the status of our facilitator? I know he he was sick and he yeah, had some um, heart I think heart problems, you, but is he coming back? Yeah, we were looking at some dates with him. He yes, I believe there's some dates we have. So, have right. So what what. In the manager's update that you receive every week, it's in there. What, so what does it say in there about him? It says that there are three dates that we are looking at for. So my guess is they haven't been read, the manager's updates. Um, 
Lisa, I have a question. If everyone could please, uh, just let's finish this, Sean, before you well, I interject. I want to go back to the original. Okay, let's just finish this. So if everyone could please read their manager update and get back to Bob by tomorrow with their availability on the dates that Bob gave us so we can be in touch with the outside facilitator around the goal setting session for the board. Can, can we just get a request for those dates outside of the manager's update? Um, I, I like to set aside the manager's update for some quality time and reading. And, and so I, I set that aside. And, and when did that the manager's update came out when it was this past? Today. It came today. out today. No, it came out yesterday. Yes, yesterday, yesterday, right. So I haven't, I haven't set aside it's, for that quality time three, yet. It's in the last three editions, so <laughs> if, you, if you missed that. Well, I, I might have missed that. But if, we, just a, if we're going to set up a meeting, let's just send it out. This is a separate meeting. And I did talk, spend some time talking with our facilitator. If, if we're not going to use him, we're going to use somebody else, then let's. No, we are. That's the same gentleman. So, yes. January 22nd, 23rd, 29th, 30th, February 5th, or 7th. Could, could we try to incorporate that as a replacement to one of the budget meetings so we're not doing four plus three plus meetings a month? Good idea. So that was to not to be a public meeting. This isn't a, that's not a public meeting. This is an executive session. Uh, I, I, we I could understand go to, that. So we, we could would, go we would take a month off from having an extra public meeting and use it for the, um, the facilitator. Well, we can see if any of those dates correspond. Well, I, I, I would be opposed to that. I think that more meetings are typically better for more transparent relations with but, our constituents. But this is if a everyone, meeting. So I think that the question will be moot until we realize if any of those dates coordinate, and I don't know the dates, uh, I know our January 14th is the first meeting of um, the, for us to talk about the finances. Um, and it doesn't seem like any of the February dates are going to coordinate with that. So if everyone could please take a look at the dates that have been provided in the manager's update um, and get back to Bob and Jennifer by tomorrow, that would be uh, helpful so that we can move forward with the goal so setting session. I just have one quick question regarding the whole manager evaluation. Are you and is leadership going to take care of it or is it going to go to um, John? So if you recall, everybody, we had a form that everybody filled uh, uh, out and everyone I, I filled gave it, it back out. to me. Yeah, and everyone gave it to you me remember. and I'm compiling all of the information. Sure. So. And then we will share that with Bob at a meeting. But I think what Jake is suggesting, are there going to be goals? Right, Jake, moving forward. Jake so, wants to establish a, well, a goal. I completely let, 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 understand let, 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 what Jake is saying. So we measure him against. I completely understand what And, and I what think Jake we all need saying. to establish those goals, not just Jack and, and Lisa. Okay, so if you were listening, what I suggested is that I, I'm listening, Lisa. the personnel committee meet, set some framework of which Whoa. Commissioner Abel sits on that, and then bring it back to the full board for c consideration. With, with all due respect, if you were listening, I was saying that we should, as a group of the whole, should set goals for the manager. To, so Jake's point is, how can we evaluate the manager without having established what goals and agreed to goals? So very common, you agree on the goals, and then you measure the, uh, the person against his attainment of the goals, and that makes sense. However, I think that all of us need to establish those goals, not just a separate subgroup. That's, that's what I was saying right. if you were listening. Well, can I finish like, <clears throat> my original comment before everybody jumps in? Because um, I'm, I'm kind of against all this. I think I don't know how many more uh, evaluations you want to have with him, but for us to micromanage the manager, I think, is a waste of uh, resources, a waste of our time, a waste of his time. We were elected by our constituents, and if, if you cannot advocate to the manager on behalf of your constituents, then you should not, you should, you should reevaluate your role as an elected official, period. Well, don't, don't attack okay. Jake, so, Sean, come on. Gentlemen, gentlemen, uh, Sean, it is our job to review the manager. The manager does report to us, so that is our job. No, it, it so is, I do but I don't, know, I don't know how many more times you want to do it. To, okay. micro, to, to, to so evaluate him is Jake, one thing, to micromanage him is something else. So I think else. what Jake is suggesting. Oh, no, it's it's not not I'm not done, I'm not done. Not you know, Bob is up in his office. You can give him a call. He takes calls from residents. So I don't know how, what more you want to do or what more you want to prove. 
Um, it was Jake's idea to have the initial evaluation in the first place, and then he says that he doesn't want to go through with it. It's an enormous waste of time in my mind, and it's just something that I, I care not to do any more of this, and it's time that we move on and we do the people's business. I would point out for the public that the form we used came from the professional organizations regarding the characteristics of a good manager. So they weren't just willy-nilly or something we dreamed up. Okay. I think I hear... Bob, Bob would you welcome... Could you not interrupt me, Commissioner Abel, please, if you don't mind? Having expectations? Excuse me, Commissioner Abel. M Ms. Borowski. You, uh, gentlemen. Civility, okay. please. Yes, please. really, Could we have Booker, some civility? Some civility. So, I think Commissioner Abel was asking think, Bob for his input on this. Okay. So what I think we sh I hear what Commissioner Abel is asking for. He is asking for goals, and that is for goals moving forward. Certainly, as a group, we can do that, um, but that will require another meeting. So if we can agree on a time when we can do that, I thought if we had a subcommittee do some work prior, bring it to the board for us to consider that at, at a regular meeting, that might make sense and help address the issue because everyone seems to feel we have too many meetings. But if we would like to do that as I a don't. group. I don't. Okay, thank you. If you'd like to do that as a group, we certainly can. I, I think the group needs to establish if we're going to have goals that we're going to measure and evaluate the manager on, we ought to, as a group, determine them. And if you want to do it as a subcommittee, that's fine. I'd ask to be invited to that subcommittee meeting so that I can provide input at the time we are forming the foundation of those those items. So uh, I would be interested in Jake finishing his question to the manager, though. Let me just follow up with uh, your point, Rich. So, you know, when we had those evaluations, there were a couple of them floated around. You could have floated around. Oh, you could have floated one that you wanted. You could have looked up one online. You could have made one out yourself. Again, we're beating a dead horse. This already happened. You guys don't like the results, or you don't think that you're going to like the results, or you're going to keep trying to just keep going after and having one more evaluation. And this, like, like having another evaluation, like this whole conversation we're having, it is, en it is an enormous waste of time. We've evaluated him once. I don't know what more you want to do. Again, if, the, if, if you can't speak to Bob or, or, or staff directly, then reevaluate why you're here. Uh, John, you're misunderstanding. The, the, the issue, and I, I was asked to do an evaluation, which I did. Later, Commissioner uh, Abel said that his view was that we should, in order to properly evaluate, we should establish goals and have the person being evaluated agree to the goals before we do the evaluation, he, which makes perfect he sense. Had, he had plenty of time during our executive sessions and when all these evaluation forms and the different evaluations forms were floating around to bring this up in the executive session. I did not hear it. Why are we bringing it up now? Let's, it's the beginning of the year. Let's get to the people's business. I, I did bring okay. it up. I brought it up in email form. I brought it up in the executive session. And I, Ever, think, I never saw a, an evaluation okay. floating. I think the Gentlemen. beginning of the year is the, uh, now you're an RPMA. And I, I think the beginning of the year is the appropriate time to do it. And I've had this conversation with Bob, um, and we've had it on multiple occasions. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to speak for Bob, but he didn't seem to oppose, you know, having, um, hearing our expectations and goals. It actually probably helps him. Okay. So, as a board, we will go ahead and set some goals. Um, I think what we need to do is finish off the evaluation from before uh, to share that information with Mr. Zinkowski, which we will do prior to the meeting on the 28th, as this is a personnel issue. And then from there, at that meeting, we can set a timeline for how we will move forward in setting goals. If we can tag those into the overall goal setting session that we have with the outside facilitator, if we can get everyone to 
submit their availability on the days that have been pro provided. This uh, gentleman is coming in from out from uh, out of state, so I'm guessing that it be uh, those dates are pretty much set in stone. So if everyone could take a look at those and please provide your information by tomorrow to Bob and Jennifer so that they can go ahead and schedule this. That would be appreciated. It doesn't sound as if any of those dates are going to coordinate with the meetings that we already have scheduled. So it probably will necessitate an additional meeting. And for that, I apologize. So do we feel like we have some resolution to this issue and can further discuss it in the executive session on January 28th? Okay. And I, I just I have one final issue. Um, I had a town hall meeting at the end of December. Um, some members of the audience were in attendance and it had to deal with microcells um, in, in the township. Um, one of the issues that if I just pause you for one second sure I apologize the only reason I want to jump in because I actually asked if you could brief us on this I think that we maybe have to do this at a public meeting instead of the organizational meeting could you defer until next week well I'm not, I'm not going to brief on this I, I'm, a, I'm asking for board approval to have John Rice look into the issues of the utility poles in these neighborhoods because that is going to be a crux of this issue I will support that, but I literally think we're not permitted to discuss anything but organization today. Yeah, we ha the, this is the reorg meeting. Um, that's not in a, we don't have that on as, we don't have new business really on Just, as an agenda item. We don't have item. public comment. Um, so, and we don't have opportunity for public comment. So, John, can I not ask that question? Well, well it's a point of order. I it's, mean, John, can, uh, during, can we do this during, or can he ask during a reorg? It's really just a point of order. Yeah, it, it is. It's a reorg meeting. Typically, there's a time in any meeting for a commissioner to bring up some issue or concern. I mean, I my understanding is, um, and maybe I'll bring it up uh, since uh, there's some issue with the utility poles, who owns the utility poles, whether it's PICO, whether it's township, whether it's a township right away, and that's just an issue that if the board is okay with, I mean, I, I need to talk to Steve and Bob about it. I need to talk to Steve about the road. I think it's Township Road that we're talking about. But the board's okay with it, that there's a consensus. Um, I think Jake's issue was just to try to clarify if we want to put something on one of those poles, do we got to go to Pico? Um, is it a township owned pole? Um, does the Public Utility Commission get involved? I doubt it. It's probably in the township right away. But that, that's the only issue. So if the board's okay with my office looking at this, this is something that's under the retainer. Um, it's not an extra cost. It's just additional work. Um, we'll do that. It's something that you know, I think we're talking about the area near Willows Park and the mansion. and It's the three neighborhoods right. in that area. Sounds like I'm mistaken when I'm sorry then. I would be interested in knowing the answer to that question. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, there's a concern out there with, with service. So, you know, it's something that has come up in the past. Well, there, there's also a protection of the residents. So if, if this project were good to go forward and at some point down the road, whoever, whatever company um, does work on those poles, if they decide to um, um, rearrange the structure I mean, the residents may not, that's not, that may not be what they approved. Mm -hmm. So the residents need to understand this too. Um, if, if the this company new, has This the is right. new business. We should, we should, this should not be discussed here. So uh, this was, it, this is on, this will be on the agenda. Put it on the for, agenda and then we can, so, and we can vote on it and okay. we can vote whether or not to send you. And we can have public comment to figure out how we're going to spend your retainer and our tax dollars. It should not it's, be it, done. It's already spent. The retainer's already spent. It doesn't matter that it's already spent. I mean, it's spent for one thing or not the other. It's, you know, it's not, it's not a binary thing. You have X amount of dollars for, for the retainer. So are we going to use part of the retainer for this or could we use it for something else? This needs to be in front of all the public. It needs to be on an agenda. It needs to be on new business. It should not be in a reorg. And it is not proper use of, of doing this when there is no one, no one knows that we're even discussing this. It needs to be on an agenda. That's what transparency is. And I don't think there's any vote that's 
being asked for tonight. It's just a matter of some information. So I do know, so Commissioner Larkin had um, forwarded me the information about this. I asked that we be briefed on what this is because I've gotten some questions from people in the community about it um, because it seems to be happening and the board has not uh, received any information about this. So it is, we ha do have a, I asked Bob to hold it um, for the next, well not hold it, but to keep it in mind for the January 28th meeting as new business so that we can be briefed on it. But if it's just a matter of um, asking John Rice to look into something, I don't, Sean, I understand what you're saying, but I don't think it's, is this a timely, an issue of timeliness? Is it a timely, uh, is it, it got a there, time there is, sensitive nature? It, it, yeah, it, there's a time sensitivity to it. Is it time sensitive to the fact that it needs to be decided right now or? Then you know what, you can yeah, do what you want. I'll go on record saying this is inappropriate to talk about this in this, in this forum. This is 100% inappropriate. This should be on new business. I don't know anything about it. I, I need to get more information on, on what I decide on if there's consensus or a vote. This cannot be done without any information to the board. You have one commissioner that's not here. No, this is, this is, no, no, John is here. He's just, where is he? No, John's there. Okay. right there. But I, as Lisa said, I have no, I have, this is, I mean, we should adjourn the meeting right now. I would, I make a motion to adjourn the meeting okay. because this is not what we should be doing. Our solicitor period. says. All right, do we have. I don't care what the solicitor right, says. You gentlemen. talk about transparency. Gentlemen, yeah, Commissioner Farhi, please. This is on TV. It's transparent. Okay. Do we have yep, consensus and the of the board? And the public can't speak, so that's not have, transparent. Do we have consensus of the board to You're send? You're the least transparent person there is, Jake. Do we have Depth consensus? Depth I see right through you. Sean, please. Civility. Do we have consensus of Point the of board order. to ask the solicitor to investigate the ownership of the telephone poles? It's the use of the poles for township. If the township wanted to put some device on it, I presumably for the... No, no, emergency. It's, it's who owns it's, the utility poles. Who, who owns the utility poles? Yeah, it's exactly what I said it was, Rich. Who, who, it's who, who owns, owns the utility poles. Well, do you mind, please? It goes, to, it goes to the point. So how many hours do you think you have in that, John? Uh, probably less than the conversation you're having. <laughs> okay. Is there consensus of the board to ask? No. Okay. Anyone else? feel positively or negatively? I'm, I'm for it. I'm for it, but just not in this forum. This needs to be on new agenda, or there can be public comment and public participation. It should not be done off the cuff at 9 o'clock at the end of a reorg meeting when no one has information and no one knew that this was even going to be spoken about, and I have no information about it. But you're for so, it. Okay, gentlemen. Yeah, he said no. But no, no I, I said I would be for listening to this, to hearing all this, the information at a regular meeting under new business. But in this forum, it is absolutely 100% inappropriate, and I will go on the record saying that it is inappropriate. The meeting should be, uh, sh should be, should be over, and you can bring this up on, at a new meeting, and I'm happy to, to give it an unbiased view, but if you're going to throw something at me where I don't know anything about without reading, without gathering information and making phone calls, and no, this is inappropriate. I, I just have another follow-up on the scope of the work because, Lisa, you pointed out that the narrow issue before John Rice is who owns the telephone poles, the, the poles in the right-of-way. So is that the only question? Because it seems to me that that will not be the end of the inquiry. The inquiry is who has title to those and what rights would the township have to utilize that for its uses should it want to do so? So isn't there two parts or are you just going to look at the narrow question of who, who owns those poles? The poles in the right-of-way. Where's the township's right-of-way? Is the poles in the right-of-way, outside of the right-of-way? That's, and who owns the pole? Who has the right to hang things on the pole? It's not that complicated of an issue. 
Well, but you, that's, you change it because you said who has the right to hang things on the pole. That's not what she said. She, you said who owns the pole. Sure. And, uh, and, and along with that, whoever owns the pole has some right to do something with it, such as hang an antenna on it, replace it, put a light on it. Ownership gives you that. So if the township doesn't own it, then the inquiry will end. I'm going to report back. That's it. My and we won't evaluate going further then? No, it'll, it'll go into the part of the plan for the project, the proposed project. What, what, so what, what will go into it? So is that expanding the spoke? So, uh, so at this point now, what you just said, I don't know what this project is. I have no information on this project. This is something that you've been engaging with, with residents. You have not shared it with the board at uh, all. That's I will not authorize to send the solicitor to, to investigate not, this. Thank you, Lisa. It's not, called not, transparency. The meeting was open to the public. Yeah, point of order. I don't think that you have that right to it not authorize it, Lisa. Two members. Of that the, is my vote to not authorize it. Two members of the. So that is my that's vote. That's mine, and that's two, or two my to three. Consensus. So you don't so have right a majority. So right now, I hear. Take a vote. Majority, the majority is we do have a majority then. No, you so don't. I'm, I'm, so do we have consensus? So right now, I hear two who are not interested in this without having the, all the information about what this project is. Uh, I hear two that are. Oh, oh, I just want to find out. I, I have no problem with doing it. I just want to know what he's looking at. What's the question? The question is who owns the polls? And then to the extent we do, the township does or doesn't, what would be their right to utilize those for well, its which purposes? Polls? There's thousands of polls in the township. We need more information before we can make an informed decision. Throwing this, throwing this at the board at 9 o'clock when no one can speak, once again, I will be a dead horse here. It is irresponsible. It is fiscally irresponsible to ask the, the solicitor to do that. It is irresponsible to, uh, to not hear from our residents who should know, who should have information about this, and they may, and sometimes they speak, and they say something important, and it would change my mind. No one knew about this. You can't put this on and blindside everybody. Well, it's I, not it transparent. It sounds like Jake tried to put right. it on. Do we no, have it, I don't care that he, that he, that he, he didn't try to put it on. It's not on, period. Do we have consensus or not? I would say no. I'll vote to have John look at it. I'll vote to have John look at that. So given that Commissioner Nagel has left the dais, uh, the dais. there is... There is consensus for, for John Rice to look at the ownership of the polls in the right of way. I'm, I'm this is, this is a, okay, a Sean. No, it's a farce. It's, just, it's ridiculous. I, I do have one other no, question it's ridiculous. of old business. Something we there covered. is no old business well, on well, the agenda. Something we something we covered. Covered. There is no old business. With we this, already entertained new. There the is question no with the secretary. Business. So, John, John, just one, one, please indulge. Is there, the secretary, is there ever an instance where the, the secretary would not sign a, a, a document or... Okay, this vote was or, already or, taken. Or, or, Commissioner or, or, Booker, may I so get a motion we're, to we're, adjourn? No, I, I wanna, I, I need, we need to... You may, have this com Can, you may have this conversation Wait, offline. Give me a call. You may have this conversation offline. Well, I want the public offline. to understand what this is. Not, I think we already you, had you this have discussion. have a specific reason for the question. Well, well no, I, I, I just want to... to I, I want to know what the... If there's ever a time where you... May I get a motion to so, adjourn? So, hold on. So, wait. So, you're refusing to answer the question? Commissioner Booker, we wait. already voted on the secretary. I, you had a, this conversation. This there is no the old business on this the agenda. This has to do with the duties of the secretary. There is... And that conversation was already had. So uh, there is but I have a, a follow-up to that. And that conversation has passed. It hasn't, it hasn't it passed. It has I, passed. I'm raising it now as old as, there is as a part motion of this meeting. To adjourn on the ad there hasn't been a motion to adjourn. Can you get up here, please? <laughs> we are not. Uh, John, I was asking a question. Can you second the motion to adjourn, please? Second. All those in favor of adjournment, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Motion passes three to two. Thank you. Good evening. <laughs>